The Jaguars' formula for success this week against the Colts should be the same as it has been all year. The Sackmeister Calais Campbell has his seventh sack of the season. Jacksonville leads the league in sacks with 23, and they're doing it without having to blitz. Only a handful of teams blitz less often than they do. But who needs the extra pressure when you have Calais Campbell, who's second in the league in sacks with eight? Their front four should have the ability to make a major impact against the Colts this week. Only two other QBs have held the ball longer from snap to throw than Jacoby Brissett. And the longer a QB takes to throw, the more opportunity there is to sack him. If you're the Colts, the key is staying on the field a little more often on third down. On Monday, they converted just two of nine third down attempts, and on the year, they're only converting 38% of the time. The Colts have been competitive with Brissett at quarterback, but he needs to do a better job of keeping the punter on the sidelines. The X factor in this game, Blake Bortles. The Jags are 3-3, and so far it's mostly been their defense and run game that's powered their three wins. In fact, for perspective, Bortles has just 16 total second-half passes in those three games, and there's a reason they've tried to minimize his role. On the year, he's completed just 57% of his passes, only Deshaun Kaiser is worse on that front. But the Colts' secondary has struggled to contain the pass. to play fake. Looking. Throwing deep. There's Taylor at the 10, at the 5, in the end zone. Plays like that one are part of why the Colts are giving up an average of 295 yards a game through the air. Only two teams rank below them. The Jags haven't won an Indy since 2012, but most of those losses were to Andrew Luck. Give them the win in this one on the power of their pass rush, but Brissett's mobility should keep them in it similar to Monday night. <laughs>